In 2007, Dilmar founder Meryl J. Fernando, in partnership with IUCN, established Dilmar Conservation, an organization committed to the principles of sustainability and environmental protection. Beginning with a primary focus in wildlife protection in the southern districts of Sri Lanka, Dilmar Conservation has now grown to include world-leading and humanitarian-based conservation programs that span the country. The Elephant Transit Home in Udawalawe National Park offers refuge to a growing population of displaced baby elephants. The Information Centre, sponsored by Dilmar Conservation, provides tourists and locals with clear and vital knowledge on the importance of elephant protection. Nearby, in the village of Mankada, Dilmar Conservation is using tourism and commerce as tools to educate locals on the importance of elephant and environmental protection. As well as promoting the national park and its wildlife, the Mankata Pottery Workshop provides training and support to some of the poorest people in the country, allowing them to earn a living and support their families. Although dugongs were once a common sight in the warm coastal waters of northwestern Sri Lanka, their numbers have gravely diminished over the years. In order to promote the importance and protection of these endangered marine mammals, Dilmar Conservation conducted an awareness initiative and survey among local fishermen to identify the distribution of and threats to the dugong population. An educational program aimed at school children in the region has also commenced as a part of this effort. As well as environmental programs, Dilmar Conservation is committed to the cause of cultural diversity in Sri Lanka, supporting marginalised communities across the country. The Wedda are a little-known indigenous people scattered across the east of Sri Lanka. They are people of the forest, a hunter-gatherer community who have for centuries lived in remote jungle areas and followed their own ancient religion. Caught up in the fighting during the Civil War, these communities suffered greatly over 30 years and have grown increasingly isolated. Dilmar Conservation's help has allowed these communities to reconnect with other Weddar tribes in the area, leading to the establishment of a regional council in 2011, an acknowledgement of their traditions from the federal government. On the outskirts of Colombo live the Yahikuntika Gypsies, believed to be descendants of ancient Indian nomads. Known by locals and tourists merely as snake charmers and fortune tellers, the truth about their struggles have remained largely unknown to the greater public. To help them with a sustainable future, Dilmar Conservation has provided these gypsies with land and assistance to build permanent houses and develop agriculture. With Dilmar Conservation's help, these marginalised communities are now seeing a future for themselves in the mainstream. Years of over-farming and unsustainable fertilisation practices have left Sri Lanka's iconic tea fields in dire circumstances. Dilmar Conservation's commitment to sustainability has led to the sponsorship of the Biochar Project, a bold and inventive new fertilisation method we have uh, seen uh, very visible results because not only the yields, it has improved the quality of the leaf also. This pilot project is just one example of many underway in the estates with the goal of restoring an ecological balance and ensuring the future of the Sri Lankan tea industry for generations to come. Dilmar Conservation and its programs have become an integral part of the nation's recovery. Reconciliation Through the Power of Nature is a unique program that incorporates environmental research with the important reconciliation efforts already underway between the North and South. We believe that nature is uh, therapeutic and it provides the necessary background for any type of reconciliation. Professor Kotagama, Sri Lanka's leading environmentalist, has, with Dilmar Conservation, developed an inventive school program making large inroads in the reconciliation effort at grassroots level. 
We have brought students from Jaffna down south to take to the World Heritage Site, the Singharaja Forest. Dilmar Conservation launched the first ever book on birds, written entirely in Tamil. Once the site of world-leading environmental research, the Tondamanaru field station in Jaffna was lost during the war. Now, with the support of Dilmar Conservation, along with several other government agencies, plans are in place to rebuild the field station, promoting the free exchange of crucial research data between Jaffna and Colombo. In the east, the former LTTE stronghold of Topigala is the site of a new forestry program to encourage revegetation in the area, as well as a focus on biodiversity here. Though for many, the road to reconciliation will be a long one, Dilmar Conservation remains committed to the cause. Dilmar Conservation's Urban Butterfly Gardens initiative is aimed at conserving butterflies and creating spaces for learning more about these elusive, delicate creatures. The Butterfly Garden at the Moratua MJF Centre is presently home to 51 species of butterfly out of 245 recorded in Sri Lanka. The scars of the 2004 Boxing Day tsunami are still visible in Sri Lanka's eastern district of Batikloa. So we started this project calling the greening of Batiklo district. We have planned to distribute plants to give a income generation for the poor people or the marginalized people. Delma Conservation is behind the scene of this project. In addition to restoring Batikaloa's green cover, Dilmar Conservation hopes to also build a sustainable cashew industry in the area, providing much needed income for the impoverished local community. This bold and ambitious plan represents Dilmar Conservation's long-term commitment to economic and environmental development in the East. Dilmar Conservation has accorded particular attention to protecting Sri Lanka's marine life, with a special focus on enhancing the conservation status of shipwreck sites in Sri Lanka's waters. This initiative has engaged in documenting the wrecks of the British Sergeant, a merchant vessel that sank after coming under fire when it altered its course to help a carrier in 1942, and SS Lady McCallum, a cargo ship which ran aground in 1926, located off the Kay and Kearney Reef. These shipwreck sites are assessed in order to help protect the unique and diverse ecosystems they host. With even more programs in development for the future, now is only the beginning for Dilmar Conservation, leading the way with its unwavering commitment to a peaceful and sustainable world. We have only one planet. It is important that we do not only take out what we can, but we must put back more than what we take.